Welcome back to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pavel Shawcross, and in today's video, I'm going to be unboxing and giving you guys a full review of the much anticipated, much requested Kawaii ES8. Now, there's two reasons why I think I'm going to really, really love this keyboard. The first of them is that I've had good experiences with Kawaii digital pianos in the past. I used a Kawaii MP11 as my practice piano for several years, my practice keyboard really, for several years and had no issues with it whatsoever. And recently I got a Kawaii ES110, which is, I believe, their most affordable stage piano. I was actually pretty impressed with it and I really liked it, especially for the price. So I'm thinking the ES8 is gonna be good just based on my past experiences with Kawaii instruments, but also I did get the chance to um, test out and make a video of one uh, one of the times I visited Kim's Pianos in Stanton, California. You may remember my video I did of it. I didn't get to do like a fully in-depth review, but I did play it a bit and I did like it then. So I'm thinking this is going to be pretty sweet, but definitely stick around for the full video to see what my opinions are. If I do find any faults or flaws, I definitely will let you know because I did purchase this, this instrument with my own money. I am not sponsored by Kawaii and they did not send me this instrument so I have no reason to hide any flaws. So I think with that out of the way let's open this up and show you guys the way that this instrument is packaged and this is particularly important in this video because if you look down here you'll see that there's a very large wound on the box. Um, something definitely uh, attacked it and got smashed into it in shipping. So we will see how well this instrument is protected. It looks like there's styrofoam right behind here so I think we should be fine even though this is one of the largest damages um, that I have seen with my own uh, keyboards getting shipped to the studio. This is the largest injury to a box we've had so far, but I'm thinking it will be fine. So let's open this up and we'll check it out. And then after that, I'll put it down here on the music stand and then we will begin to check it out and play it. So let's do that. So now I've got the box for the ES8 open, looks like it was actually upside down, so my bad on that. But here you can see the way this thing is packaged, and it looks like the damage to the box was indeed on the styrofoam, and I don't think the actual instrument got damaged whatsoever, which is absolutely fantastic. One nice thing I love about Kawhi's packaging, and they seem to do this for every instrument of theirs I've unboxed, is they have a really detailed actually kind of beautiful blown up diagram of all of the box and its packaging materials It even shows this little cardboard spacer here thing and it even shows that on the diagram so everything is labeled and everything is shown on the box where it's supposed to be which is absolutely fantastic the unboxing experience for Kawhi Instruments seems to be very very clean and very well done and honestly is one of the best uh, unboxing experiences in the digital piano industry I really like the way they package their instruments so without any further ado let me get this out of the box off camera and set it all up, test it out a little bit, and then I will come back to you and we can check out the actual instrument. So now we have the ES8 out of the box, and as you can see, it's a very nice looking digital piano. Honestly, Kawhi is making some very, very nice looking digital pianos these days, and the ES8 is no exception. Another thing that Kawhi has been doing for quite some time, and this is also no exception to, is the build quality. Kawhi's digital pianos, especially their higher end ones, starting with the ES8, all have a very high build quality. I used an MP11 for a couple of years, and it had like the highest build quality of any digital piano I had, fo I had found until then and this is probably like right up in that same tier. This top part is metal. The speaker grill is metal. The back plate of the instrument is metal. This front panel here is metal and I believe the cheek blocks and the side panels may be wood actually. So it's a very very high quality instrument and also this music desk here which is either very similar or identical to the music desk of the MP11 and the MP11 SE is solid metal. So it's a very, very high quality instrument and it has a really, really lovely appearance as well. It's got a smooth, very modern aesthetic. It's a very, very nice appearing instrument and it also comes in white, I believe as well. Um, it might not, but I'm pretty sure that it does. So that is also an option for you if your home works better with white decor than black decor. I like it in black. I think it looks really fantastic and honestly, it's really amazing. The only f issue with the appearance and build quality is that 
this is a high gloss finish, so it will attract fingerprints a lot faster than a more like a, a, a uh, you know a satin finish will. This is kind of a cross between satin and high gloss, so it definitely will get fingerprints on it. Initially, it's a bit kind of resistant to them, but over time, they will eventually build up. So you might want to clean it off every now and then to keep the fingerprints at bay. That's really the only issue I have with the build quality, which obviously is a very, very tiny thing. Overall, the build quality of this is absolutely top-notch and excellent. I can't think of anyone else that I know of who builds digital pianos that are this high quality. Also, the sounds on here are absolutely excellent as well. Many of these are actually simply ported over from the MP11 SE. The default piano patch here is the SK Concert Grand, which is used in the MP11 SE, and many of these others on here as well have been ported over from both the MP11 and the newer MP11 SE. So in a little bit here, I will play that and show you guys how absolutely gorgeous that default piano sound is. But the other thing I wanted to talk about here is the pedal here, which if I remember right is called the F10H, the same pedal that comes with the ES110, and it is a very, very nice pedal indeed. It's kind of like the little brother to Yamaha, uh, not Yamaha, Kawai's triple pedal unit that comes with the MP11 SE and it's a very very nice pedal as well. I believe it supports half pedaling and it's just very very nice and it doesn't slip on the floor either. So that is also a great bonus to this thing and overall I really really like it. So let's play some music here on the default piano patch the SK Concert Grand. I'll play some Debussy and also some pieces of my own and then after that I will come back and give you guys my feedback on the action and the sound.
As you can hear, the sound of that default piano patch is gorgeous. It's easily one of my absolute favorite piano samples in a digital piano today. It's, like I said, the same sound in the MP11 SE, and I already basically know what the sound is because I've played the MP11 SE about maybe six months to a year ago. Same exact sound uh, patches here, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's warm and rich in the mid-range. It's bright and sparkly in the treble. The gradient from being warm and mellow in the mid-range to being bright and sparkly in the treble doesn't seem to be, you know, overly harsh or overly sudden. It just gradually becomes bright and sparkly in the treble, and it has a lot of like power to soar over the low bass notes. The low bass is rich and growly. It's absolutely amazing. And while a sampled piano, at least the ones I've tried, always will sound a little bit digital compared to their acoustic counterparts, you definitely can hear the spirit of the Shigeru Kawai Concert Grand in there, that warm richness that they're very famous for. The sample does have that, and it's actually one of the few rich and warm piano samples that you run across in the digital piano world. Typically, a lot of them are more brightly voiced to be, you know, be able to be heard through a mix. This S-Kite Concert Grand is sounds gorgeous all on its own. It's wonderful. I mean, I can't say enough good things about it. I absolutely love that sample. Now, there's also a few more samples in here. There's the EX Concert Grand, which is the old default piano patch that was used on the original MP11, most likely the original MP7 as well. And this is also pretty decent. It still sounds nice and it actually is pretty good, but it's just not quite as nice as the SK Concert Grand sound. Let me play, um, what should I play here? Maybe I'll play a little bit of my treble test piece on this just again so you can hear how this one sounds. As you can hear, it still sounds pretty good, but it definitely is brighter and a little bit more punchy. So this would be a more ideal sound if you're playing on location with a band. You might want to choose this sound because it's still a very high quality sound, but it's a little bit brighter and doesn't sound quite as good on its own to me as the SK sample. Uh, up next is a jazz grand. I think maybe I'll just play a really simple short jazz progression here for this one. The Jazz Grand actually sounds a bit like an EQ'd version of the SK Concert Grand we heard earlier. It's a little bit different sounding, but it also has that same amount of beautiful treble resonance up here that the um, the SK Grand also has. So that actually is pretty nice. I wasn't sure what to expect there, but the Jazz Grand sounds pretty good. Uh, up next, we have Warm Grand, which, as the name might suggest, it's probably going to be pretty warm. The final sample here in the piano category of the ES8 is titled Pop Grand. Now I will play a pop chord progression here, um, I've played this one in the past and I have not gotten an issue with it before so I'll play this, but I'll also play some other stuff on it so if I have to mute that section of the video due to copyright issues you'll still get to hear the Pop Grand sample.
Again, that has a very resonant treble, but as you can hear, it is definitely a very, very bright patch. Very nice for being able to punch through a live mix situation. So that is all of the acoustic piano samples of this instrument, and now it is kind of time to move on to the electric piano category. Actually, there's a second ba batch of acoustic pianos. Apparently, they didn't put them all in one for some reason. So, but before I move on to that, I did want to talk about the action, because I did say that I would talk about that. Now, one thing you may be thinking, if you're familiar with Kawhi's lineup of of digital pianos is that they have the ES8, they also have the MP7 SE, and their flagship stage piano is the MP11, which as I've mentioned, actually the MP11 SE, which as I've mentioned uses virtually all of these same exact sounds. So you might be thinking to yourself, why would you buy the very expensive MP11 SE when you can buy the ES8 and get virtually all of the same sounds? Well, in my opinion, the majority of that comes down to the action. The MP11 SE uses Kawai's Grand Feel action, and this uses Kawai's RH3 action. Now, one interesting thing to me about the RH3 is that Korg also uses an RH3 action made in Japan, um, but it's a co totally different action to this. Uh, the RH3 from Kawai is a lot lighter. It actually has let off, unlike Korg's RH3 action, and overall it definitely has a different feel. So first of all, I will start off with the things that I like about this action, because in some of my videos I talk, I say either I like this action or I don't like this action, but in this case there's things I like and things I don't like, so I wanted to talk about both of those in this video. So first of all, the things I wanted to talk about that I like are the fact that the action has a really great dynamic response. It really does. You can play really, really quietly, or you can play it very, very loudly, and it handles everything just fine. Um, for the for the most part, playing anything really, the dynamic response is going to come out the way you want it to. And I was playing Debussy, those high notes were singing out just perfectly. Some of that comes down to the piano patch, but also some of it does come down to the control of the action. So the action's control is very good, and you do have a lot of dynamic control, which is very, very important. And the other thing that I actually like that I'm actually noticing on the ES8, which is something I never notice on a digital pianos, is actually the tactile feet, touch of the uh, action, uh, the key tops. A lot of people and companies will advertise that their instruments have ivory touch keys or ivory feel keys and all that stuff. And generally, I don't really feel a difference between normal plastics and the ivory touch, but for some reason with the ES8, I'm actually feeling a difference. I'm not really sure how much it's truly affecting the way my fingers are sticking to the keys, but I do notice that the white keys especially, and also the black keys to a lesser extent, have kind of a very, like a, a satin, kind of a slightly gritty finish, which I really like, and it actually feels quite nice under the fingertips. However, now it's time for things that I don't like, and I think I'll start off with the smallest one of those first. That is the noise that the key action makes. I find that this action is a bit noisier than you'd expect from an instrument at this price point. You'd think that by this point, when you're paying this much money for an instrument, you'd expect to have an action that sounds quality when you play it. When you push the key down, it makes a dull, uh, muffled thump, which actually has a nice hearty sound to it. Now that in itself is fine, that's pretty standard, and that's actually pretty quiet for a digital piano action. What annoys me to a small degree uh, is the noise that they make when they come back up. Listen to this. Hear that? They bounce and they make that, that noise. Now maybe it's a little bit nitpicky, but I really haven't noticed this before in any other digital pianos, even ones that are much, much cheaper like this. When I get the ES110 back out, I may have to check that out, but I don't remember hearing that before then or noticing how much the keys bounced with the ES110. You will kind of get some key bobble on like the Yamaha P125 and even the 515, which is in the same price bracket, but that key bounce is much less when they come back up on those two than it is on here and they also make less noise when they come back up than the ES8. Now that isn't a massive issue because when you have the speakers up and you're playing it, you do kind of forget that they are making noise, but of course with wear and tear, eventually that sound probably will get louder, so it is something I wanted to talk about, mostly because it's something that a lot of my commenters talk about. They say that over time the actions get louder, or to begin with, an action of a certain keyboard was too loud and noisy, so that is something I wanted to talk about, and it, honestly it's something I did notice with this instrument straight out of the box, that the keys have a lot of bounce to them when they come back up and you can actually hear them hit the top of I guess here or whatever you can hear the mechanism moving twice when you let go of the key I may have to boost that uh, in post-production but I may not I'm not sure exactly how loud that's coming out on my microphone but that is one thing I noticed 
Uh, but the other, the bigger thing with this action is, while I did say at the beginning that it has an excellent dynamic control from everything from playing extremely quietly to extremely loudly, it does suffer when you try to play as quietly as you possibly can. The action can do it, but for some reason when I'm playing very quietly, it just feels extremely gummy to me. I think that's because of the let off, the escapement of the keys. The way that it's simulated in a digital piano is literally with a piece of rubber, at least in the cases I've seen. It's a little it's like uh, it's it's a kind of a strange shape it's like almost like an anvil kind of a shape you have like this dome shaped with a little thin stock that attaches it to the main piece of rubber so an action component rubs against it and creates this let off kind of a feel and the rubber piece will actually bend and in this instrument I think it's a little bit too prominent and a little bit too stiff now to give it the benefit of the doubt I did just unbox it so it may get lighter with um, you know with use uh, that is something I noticed with the MP11 SE it was very stiff when I unboxed it and after about half an hour of playing it got lighter um this I've been playing it for about an hour and it hasn't really changed much at all so I'm thinking that's more of an inherent um design with the instrument and as a result when you're playing as quietly as you possibly can the action really just feels kind of gummy and sometimes doesn't come out quite right at all you noticed when I played uh Claire de Lune and I played that first note I didn't play the two notes like I was supposed to I didn't do this I did it again I instead, I only played one instead of both. That's how it's supposed to be, but when I'm trying to play as quietly as the instrument can possibly do, it's a bit unpredictable, more unpredictable than I would like. Now for normal stuff, for the rest of Claire de Lune, for the pop chord progressions I've played, for my test pieces, for most everything else I will play in this video, this action is perfectly fine. But when you're pushing the limits of how quiet can you play on this action, that's when it starts to suffer. Um, for me, I really like the tone of a piano when you're playing it as quiet as possible, and it's also a fun challenge for me to push the limits of how quiet I can play and how quiet the instrument can play. And when I'm doing that on this, it does become a bit unpredictable, and sometimes notes can drop out that I don't want them to. It just has a very stiff kind of a gummy feel when you're trying to play it as quiet as possible. And for me, it just irks me a little bit that the action isn't as good as you'd expect for an instrument of this price point. The other rather small, but kind of it's magnified by the gumminess issue of this is the fact that as you move your finger in towards the back of the key, it does get slightly heavier by a couple of grams. And that is a very common issue with many digital pianos. The ES8 isn't the only one to have it. And actually it's pretty decent for a digital piano. It doesn't get massively heavier towards the back, but when you're trying to play as quiet as possible, combined with the fact that the action gets a bit heavier, especially with Moonlight Sonata where I have to have my fingers at the back of the keys if I didn't it would be a very awkward hand position um having the action be a little heavier towards the back and the fact that it's a bit gummy feeling and a little too heavy definitely makes playing extremely quietly a bit more challenging so I think uh what types of music can you play on the ES8 I think the ES8 is geared more towards pop rock jazz that type of music and not so much most classical music you can play it on it but it won't be as easy to play it on here as with other keyboards like the MP11 SE the uh piano patch you heard when I was playing Moonlight Sonata there was the SK5 Grand Piano which did sound pretty nice. Um, the high G sharp that I was playing there didn't have as much uh, presence and sustain as I imagined the SKEX would. Let's have a listen. This is
the SK Concert Grand Patch is a bit more pure and definitely does have a bit more sustaining uh, power up here in that mid-range compared to the SK5. Not saying that's a bad thing for the SK5 uh, piano patch, it's a completely different piano, so it is going to have different characteristics, but that is just what I'm noticing. Kawhi has put it in here just so you can have a different a variety of pianos. Uh, up next is an upright piano patch, so this is what that sounds like. Definitely has many of the qualities of an upright piano, like the slightly tubby bass, and it also has a really resonant treble that you don't often see in upright pianos. Up next is Pop Grand 2. The next one here is Modern Piano. I'm not actually sure what we're going to get here with this one. Let's check it out. Obviously, it's an electromechanical um, acoustic-ish, acoustic electric piano, kind of like a Yamaha CP80 back in the day. Fun fact, Kawai actually made their own competitor to the CP80. It was an upright form factor, however, and only used one string per note, but it was an electromechanical electric piano um, from the 70s and 80s. I forget the name of it, but it's a really, really cool thing, and I would love to get my hands on one of them and do a video of it. Perhaps that is what that was um, imitating. I did like the sound of it. Uh, up next is Rock Piano. So basically an extremely, extremely bright piano sample. And back now we're back around to the SK5 grand piano. So those are all of the acoustic grand piano sounds in here. And now let's move on truly to the electric piano category. This is the classic EP, which is emulating a Fender Rhodes. It's actually a pretty decent Fender Road Sender. You've got that subtle tremolo or auto pan. I really can't tell exactly what it is. They're calling it classic tremolo. Um, so it's got that really nice subtle tremolo in there and the tone of it is actually pretty decent too. That is one of the major upgrades from the ES-8 compared to the ES-110. I really didn't like the road sound of the ES-110. The ES-8 has a very nice road sound that I think is either the same or very similar to the one on the MP-11 SE. The next electric piano patch we have here is called 60s E-Piano, and this one here is actually kind of interesting. This is emulating a Wurlitzer 200 or 200A, uh, probably 200A, honestly, and as it is, the way that Kawhi has programmed it, honestly, it sounds a little bit dry. If you can have a listen to this. It's not bad sounding, I actually do like it, but it is rather dry. So when I was playing with this keyboard and experimenting off camera, what I decided to do, and I'll do it here again, is put the reverb type on Cathedral, which gives you a massive amount of reverb, which sounds absolutely fantastic here.
That, in my opinion, is absolutely gorgeous, and Kawhi has put some really, really great effects in here in this instrument. There are a number of different effects that you can apply. If you tap and hold the effects button, it will then give you the different effects, and you can use these buttons over here to affect which type of effect is going to be applied, and then you can use these buttons to change qualities about that effect. One small issue I have with the... Um, the ES8 is the user interface. It's not the best. You can get a, a hold of it and get to know how to use it, but because of the limited amount of buttons and the small screen, it does have a few limitations. But fortunately, a lot of the things that are in the menu aren't things you're going to need to tweak, be tweaking on a day-to-day -day basis. If you want to apply effects to an instrument, then you will have to go in there and tweak it. But I think it's a thing you could totally get used to the way it works. I'm getting more used to it as it is now, but it is a bit limited because of the size of the screen. So there's only so much information that can be on at once. Um, let me just change the effect back to the uh, tremolo that it had before. We'll turn the cathedral reverb back to the room. All right, so now let's move on to the next electric piano sound, but I loved the whirly sound. Up next is a modern EP, so it's kind of like an FM synthesis type of uh, electric piano. <laughs> Pretty cool sounding. And up next, we have Classic EP2, which is a brighter, punchier version of the roads we heard earlier. So those are all of the electric pianos of the Kawhi ES8, and to be honest with you, there's not a lot. There's only one, two, three, four, and that's it. There's only four different electric pianos on the Kawhi ES8. Um, but however, there's also the good side to it. The bad side is there's not a wide variance, but the good news is there are a number of effects and reverbs that you can put on that, as you heard with the whirly sound, can totally change the sound of the instrument. But also, all of the electric pianos in here are good sounding. They all sound nice. A lot of digital pianos that I find, especially a certain brand, will have 45 different electric piano sounds, but all of them sound really bad. This has four and they all sound pretty good. So I think that's actually a bit of a, be uh, a bonus there for Kawhi. Up next we have, I believe we have four organ sounds and also they're pretty good. Now, I do not know how to change the speed of the Leslie. I'm sure there is a way. I believe if you plug in Kawhi's triple pedal unit, you can use the left pedal to turn on and off the Leslie speaker. That is a feature on some of their CA models of, um, of uh, digital pianos and probably would be the same here. It would have been cool if they had made the damper pedal actually just change the Leslie speed because a real Hammond organ doesn't have a sustained pedal like a piano does. So that would have been kind of a cool feature, but I'm sure there is a way and I'm just missing it. I did look in the manual for the word Leslie and I didn't actually see anything over there, but I might have just missed it. However, the drawbar organ tone is actually pretty decent. Have a listen to that. Not bad, especially for a piano company that focuses on making acoustic pianos and not drawbar organs. Up next is a different variant. It's called Jazz Organ, so I'll play another jazzy progression here for you. That is a lot of fun to play, and I actually really enjoy that jazz organ sound. Up next, we have two different pipe organ variants. We have a principal octave, and then we also have a uh, instrument just generically labeled as church organ. Here's the principal octave.
is that. I'm curious what reverb effect they have. Instead of the cathedral effect on a pipe organ, they have live hall reverb, which is kind of odd. It's one step below the cathedral setting. So I'm not sure why that was set on live hall and not cathedral. I know that's how it came from the factory. It defaults to being live hall. So don't know about that. But overall, that particular organ sound isn't too bad. However, unfortunately, the next one does leave a little bit to be desired. That is the same church organ sound that I believe is found on the ES-110. While it is nice that the ES-8 has organ sounds, the tone wheel organ sound is so good that I actually would have preferred to have four different variants of the tone wheel instead of four different variants of a church organ or pipe organ, but that's just me personally. I did like the drawbar organs there. Up next we have a harpsichord. I don't know why that note triggered again at the end. That was very, very strange. Um, but that is the harpsichord sound. Up next is not a double harpsichord like off you often see, but instead is a vibraphone. The final sound in the harpsichord and mallet section is a marimba, which is kind of an odd choice, but also kind of a cool one. I believe that that is the last one. Yes, indeed, we go back around to the harpsichord. The MP11 SE, or actually my own MP11, probably the 11 SE as well, had a Celesta sound as well, so that is one thing that we'll be missing out of the ES8. It was a very nice Celesta sound too, so I'm a bit sad to see that's not here, um, but nonetheless, it is not here. Up next, we have the strings and choir section, and to be honest with you, this really isn't my favorite category of sounds in the instrument. It's not that I think that they're bad per se, um, but they're just not really something that I use on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, strings and pads and stuff like that, so it's not really the main focus for me. Um, there's also a lot of them in here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's eight different ones here, so if for some reason the strings and choirs um, category is one of the largest in the instrument. But nonetheless, here's the slow strings patch for the ES8. That would probably sound very nice layered with a piano, to be completely honest with you. Let me actually try that out here. Let's try the slow strings layered with a piano, the SK Concert Grand. Yeah, that was actually pretty decent sounding. I did like the way that sounded. Up next is the string pad, which is, well, it's a string pad. I actually do like that one a lot. That one sounds pretty cool. Uh, up next is warm strings. Up next is String Ensemble, which if I remember correctly is kind of a more punchy strings effect, like an orchestra effect. It's a bit muddy for playing Pirates of the Caribbean, but that is basically what that is. There's also two choir variants. There's a choir ooh and a choir ah, so here's those.
I'm not really sure how much you would use those on a day-to-day -day basis, but they are there. Up next, there are three, two different pads, actually. There is the, hang on, let me get back to it. There is the, wait a minute, I'm in the wrong category now. Hang on, hang on a second. Uh, where was it? In the New Age pad and then also the Atmosphere pad. So here's both of those, the New Age pad first. That one's actually pretty cool sounding. I do like those. So I do like those, but honestly, they're not something I do use on a day-to-day -day basis. So the strings and choir patch and section isn't really the main focus of this video. And the final section of sounds here in this instrument is the bass category. I'll just run through all of those and do a bass line and play them all. We have wood bass, we have electric bass, we have fretless bass, and we have the wood bass with the ride, which I think is gonna be my favorite. But here's all of those. And with that, that is every single sound of the Kawaii ES8. And as you can hear, the vast majority of them are actually pretty decent. The harpsichord isn't great, the church organ sound isn't great, but most of the other ones are actually pretty good. And there's also a couple of the pianos in the second category, like the rock piano, I'm not a massive fan of. But the majority of the sounds in here are actually really high quality. The SK Concert Grand, the EX Concert Grand, several of the other acoustic pianos, the Rhodes, the Whirly, the uh, drawbar organs, and even some of the strings and pads, and also the bass instruments are all pretty solid sounding. So what you have here with the ES8 is a slim, attractive digital piano that has a lot of high quality sounds and overall is very, very nice and I do like it. Probably its biggest issue though is going to be the action and that in itself isn't a massive thing. This is far from the worst action that I have ever seen in a digital piano. I just would have expected it to be a little bit better for the price that you pay with the instrument. I think that the uh, the weight towards the back of the keys, I know it's difficult to get that to be the same from front to back on a digital piano, but I feel like for the price point of this instrument, it should be a little bit better than it is. It is this maybe about... I don't know, hard to say, could be more than this, but maybe 10 to 15 grams weight difference, maybe less, I don't know. But there definitely is a weight difference from the very back of the keys to the very front of the keys. And then also when you're playing it extremely quietly, the let off or the, the uh, what they call it, the escapement is extremely prominent. And that's kind of the one huge difference I've noticed between this and the P515, Yamaha's equivalently priced instrument. I will be doing a comparison of those, but the first thing I wanted to notice straight out of the bat, even disregarding that video is that the P515's escapement is honestly almost non-existent and the ES8 is the complete polar opposite. It's incredibly, incredibly prominent. Somebody who didn't even know how to play a piano could come over and poke the key and go, man, there's this weird bump at the bottom. What's that all about? If they had no idea what a piano does. So that is the one thing I wanted to mention about the ES8 is when you're playing extremely quietly, the action could use a little bit of work, but overall it's not bad. And for the vast majority of music, most people would play on it the RH3 action probably would get them by just fine. For the vast majority of everything I've played in this video, I've had no issues. It's only when I'm pushing the limits of how quiet this instrument can play. Also, the user interface, like I mentioned earlier, is a little bit limited. You saw me get a little bit confused there as to what was going on with the sounds. I got a little bit mixed up, but like the MP11 and the MP11 SE, which those didn't have a perfect user interface inner either, but you could definitely get used to them. This one, I think, also doesn't have a perfect user interface, but it's not the worst I've seen, and I think you could get used to it. So overall, I think my review of the ES8 is actually pretty positive. I do actually like this digital piano as a whole. Just as a couple of small things that if they were fixed, I would definitely say is absolutely amazing. But in the meantime, I think that I'd say that the ES8 is an all-around very decent digital piano, especially that SK Concert Grand sound 
is absolutely gorgeous. So it's really, really fun to play. Also something I should have mentioned earlier in the video though is the speakers. Uh, it's kind of interesting to me because I'm only seeing two speakers on either end of the instrument. They're also pretty small. They're like oval shaped speakers about this big around, but they actually do have a pretty decent sound. They're not the loudest speakers you'll find. The P5 and 5 goes a lot louder, but they do have a pretty nice sound and overall they are surprisingly decent. So that is very nice as well. So I definitely hope that you guys have enjoyed this review of the Kawaii ES8. I know it's been very, very anticipated and a lot of you guys have been wanting to see my feedback. So there it is. I definitely hope that you guys have enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel and you've made it all the way to the end of this video, you might want to go check out the rest of my channel as well. I do lots of cool reviews of pianos, keyboards, digital pianos, acoustic pianos, organs, and all kinds of other cool stuff too. So if any of that sounds cool, you might want to think about subscribing. And if you do subscribe, thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.